Hello guys and good morning, good evening, good afternoon wherever you are in the world and welcome back to my channel. This is Rebi Buka and I'm back to you guys with another video guys. So before I proceed with this video, I'm gonna show you guys the outfit of the day. Alright, so let's get it. Get it girl, get it, that's the outfit. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Okay. So that's the outfit of the day. Um, I don't know. Like, okay. That is a bit too much, I think. So let's get that one down. That is a bit of decency now. Um, I'm going to show you this skirt. It's, it's a little, a little skirt. Don't judge me. So anywho, guys, I'm going to put this camera here and hopefully it focuses and hopefully I make a video. I know it's been quite some time since I came, I came back to you guys and I'm sorry if I've disappointed you guys. Obviously I haven't been on my schedule. On making videos and today I'm here and I'm trying to be um, what can I say I'm trying to be a frequent youtubing you know in this YouTube world where if you're not glammed up people look like I don't care guys listen okay now let me come back to this video sometimes you get people commenting to your videos as in comparing you and compare okay let me not start it I'm not gonna rant on this video. I'm not gonna complain on this video. I'm just gonna say, guys, thank you so much for the people who have supported this channel and also for the people who, who are liking my videos and those who are subscribing again, thank you so much. So today let's make this video and I hope this video comes out okay. Like I'm gonna talk to you guys. Obviously my video is about talking to you guys and um you're just coming to my internet friends and hopefully having a conversation and telling you what is in my brain and just you know airing my my thoughts and opinions regarding life and today i'm gonna talk about uh, give you guys sort of just telling you guys how i find what is my thought into the men, women or you know going about finding because i'm in the process of trying to to find myself obviously a, a husband and not just a you know just a husband guys and in the process of it how it's getting on and also the way just like my overall opinion regarding this because i'm sorry but i'm gonna say this uh in the and i'm saying this when i'm doing this don't judge me did I say don't judge me? Yeah, I'm gonna do this. You know, it's funny because some people come out of the house wearing short dresses and then, you know, they, they be going around walking and doing this all day, all day long. It's just like looking so uncomfortable. And I have never ever exposed my cleavage like this, but I just felt like, like a bit of it, you know, like some, you know, like I just felt, felt like just coming on here looking like this today and i said just just take it you know and don't judge me i have a, a very high moral standard i'm a very morally upright person in uh, and i'm is this video actually even recording yeah and i'm i'm a christian woman yeah and before you go and judge me and say oh you now you're gonna come in with a christian card before you go just listen to my story and i am i am it's difficult dating out here when you are holding a certain principles as a Christian woman. And well, there is a lot, a lot of Christian women in the world. And there are many who, who are Christians, but they are not really bothered about following the Christian principles because they humanly justify the Bible by, you know, saying, I will do it. And, God will understand afterwards and you know there is forgiveness there is mercy and you know like yeah and 
I'm not here to judge these people. Obviously, everyone have a road that they're walking on and I'm not judging you unless I walk in your shoes. And today I'm just here to speak about my experience. experience. And I'm saying that I'm a Christian woman because I want you guys to know where my reasoning is coming from when I start to, to speak regarding dating and, and love, sex, marriage and everything. I want you to, to get the idea of where I'm coming from with my reasonings. Um, I've seen people because I've spoken about my dating experiences and you know because obviously I am dating interracially and uh, that is just my that is just me. I'm open to dating people from other ethnicity. I'm not really just put it specifically putting myself out there for African men and saying that I'm only gonna date in my race. I'm open to dating interracially. So that is why. And when you are open to dating interracially, especially me, I have spoken in my last video telling you guys the way when I was growing up, how I viewed white men or how I viewed the women who were, were going out with white men. So now I'm going to talk about, because I'm old enough now, I started dating when I was, when I was like, not until I was over 25, you know, like I was okay because I was very close minded and I came from a very uh, strong Christian background where in on Fridays you had to go to church. And if you didn't find me at home, you would find me at, at church in the we go call them cashers in Kenya. And I only started going out at night because it was not a lifestyle that I was exposed to because uh, I just didn't like it because I watched my mother having that lifestyle and it ended so badly because uh, she died very mystery, very miserably. And I was just not into, I just didn't like that lifestyle at all. So you obviously you can go out. This video is all over the place, guys, but just take whatever you're going to take from it. Don't judge me. <laughs> Yeah, so I just I was not in that lifestyle. So when I was uh, when I started dating, obviously when I felt like I was old enough, it is when I felt like I was financially stable enough because I just felt like because I come from a very 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 poor background, I just didn't feel confident feel confident in myself having a man having felt like I want a man to bring me out of my misery state. I just wanted to be able to find a job and fed for myself before a man, a man came into my life. I just wanted him to find me in a, in a good place, you know? I didn't want to feel like I have to depend on him. He have to find me because trust me, when I didn't have money for deodorant or perfume, I didn't smell so good. I didn't have money to, to do my hair or, or, you know, take care of my skin or even look good. So I didn't feel confident in that state to even start dating because if you don't smell good, if you're not confident in, you know, I cannot present myself to a man. That is how I felt personally. So I didn't date until when I was very late in life because I felt like I wanted to, to achieve something out of myself. So I, uh, in, and when I was in Africa, obviously I was homeless. I used to sleep in the street corridors and I was always telling God that oh, the only thing I want out of my life is to, to get out of poverty. And I wanted to do it regardless of what. So I was always looking for sponsorships in church and whatever it is that could get me out of poverty. I was trying that so much. And sometimes I could be homeless and, and it was just a miserable state for me. But one thing I used to always tell God even when I was sleeping on those cartons in the street corridors was, God, please just take care of me. I don't want anybody to, to touch me or rape me or, you know, infect me with AIDS. Or I just want to be okay because there were so many of my siblings who were suffering just the way I was suffering. And I wanted to be that pillar, that shoulder for them to, to you know, to raise them up. And I just wanted to come out. And now I came out of that misery because of, how my desire was and God saw my heart, saw my heart, I purely just wanted to help, you know, and that is how I got what I, where I got because now I get to help my siblings and they are educated more than I am because I was not able to get education, you know, because uh, we were so poor that you could not even go to school. Guys, I say that in my past video, you know. And when you are poor, there is a lot of ignorance. There is a lot of, you know, early marriages, you know, there is a lot of 
pain you know sometimes when you are in poverty it's really difficult for you to get out of that poverty mentality because you you don't feel like you are good enough but at some point god just put me in a position where i felt like like i was I, i'm better than this like i can do more more you know i can i can be something i can do something with my self god can use me out of this miserable state something he can make this beauty for ashes you can turn my ashes to beauty and that is exactly what happened so now it came to a point of my life that i desire married i wasn't married i was in a relationship with a guy and i've seen so many people listening talking and saying that oh african women are so desperate that even if they get any man a man like they just want to get a white men so that they can come out of poverty and everything people judge you know and even right now in i just came back from africa and guys i'm a hundred percent i tell you i am one of those people who don't know how to depend on anybody for anything like the thought of me not being standing on my two feet scares me so much because what if a man decides to leave me and i don't have anywhere to go with my children or if I had a child and my child, like I just don't want my kids to suffer the way we did and the way my, so my mom suffer. I just want to be able to uh, be, you know, like do something with myself. So that is why I had, by now I have like one house for commercial purposes and another one is my, my four bedroom house in Kenya that is fully paid for and I bought. Obviously I have a like until next, uh, next next year I'm, I'm gonna pay the debt until next year uh, april so i'll be done the two houses will be debt free so i wanted to excuse me to do that for myself before anything else so now that i'm in a position i was in a relationship and we broke up and people are talking about me like i'm some kind of whore and seeing all african women as some kind of whore who are only going after white men for for money or, or, or desperation or whatever. It's not the case with everybody. People are so close-minded, are so judgmental before they really know the real story regarding people. Because me personally, I was with him, but he was not helping me financially. I was working and I'm, I'm, we were far away. I'm in Dubai, uh, I'm a flight attendant. And he's, you know, it was a long distance relationship. And I was always, and I've always have a principle in me that I, I just wanna, I just wanna get married and get involved sexually with a man. And I have never let a man like intercourse is something that is very, very sacred for me. That is that is how I see it. And unless somebody put a ring on my finger, unless somebody, and even if he puts a ring on my finger, guys, there's a lot of people who get. Uh, engaged and, and 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 the engagement break up so for myself particularly i'm not judging the people who choose to live with men before they get married or whatever that is your life but for me personally i just want for myself to be able to get married and i've seen a lot of women christian women having these testimonies of it is possible to marry somebody and uh, and you know have sex with them after you're married and sometimes it worries me because of how people talk about it. Because sometimes I, I also ask myself, what if it doesn't happen? Like, what if we are sexually not compatible after we are married? And because I waited for to get married to do it. So obviously that scares me as, as well. But at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, so sometimes even with the, with the pressure, because even if you have a boyfriend, you have friends who are very influential and they tell you why why are you not doing anything with him like for me i was not open to even kissing leave alone touching or even getting anywhere because i was so rooted in my christian belief about sexual immorality and everything that i didn't know how to get my headspace out of it so i was so against it so i'm just like a celibate woman who is just really committed and i know i say this because when i was younger i did some stupid things that i'm still remembering until today that i'm not proud of and i wish i never did and even now i just don't want to grow old someday and sit in my rocking chair and feel like i feel so bad for what i did in my last life because i'm very accountable for my actions in this life so in that Thought, I just want to be able to find somebody who loves me enough to to wait like you know to wait to get married to me like why that it does it have why does knowing me has to go through getting into my vagina first I don't get it 
and then how many men will i have dated and slept with like i've been dating all my life and all these men coming you know i just don't feel okay like i feel like my mind and my heart is connected to my vagina and that is why i don't feel like i have to let men you know take take like they're not obviously taking anything but i just don't feel that i am um, i just don't feel that i have to go through that to finally meet my husband so even with my ex ex-boyfriend it was the same obviously i was open enough to kissing and touching and you know doing other things that you can do when you're in a relationship without getting in deep but in my mind i was not really comfortable with it a hundred percent because i felt like i was doing something that was against god and and i felt deeply that that relationship was not gonna get anywhere because it was not rooted in god and the guy was not walking towards god and for me that is not a foundation by which i should start my relationship and i was in it just for the sake of it and i was doing whatever i was doing just to please him because everyone tells me oh if you are not pleasing your man in any way he's gonna run away but he ran away anyway even though i was you know he he we left each other anyway even though i was open up to do things with him but which was not sexual intercourse but again my mind space was not okay with him because i was uh, constantly feeling uh, like my conscience was not clear with whatever I was doing so even now after I got out of that relationship obviously my aim is to find a husband because I'm not really a desperate person that I have to but I, I have to do something towards meeting this guy that I don't even have to just sit in the house and expect him to come so obviously it's not a rebound that people will ask you or you get into another relationship so quick when you get out of one i was like well life ain't waiting for nobody like get on with it like if somebody comes into your life who wants to know you again you don't gonna close it because somebody just left your life like excuse me maybe they are screwing somebody and now you're here crying and saying i need to heal her. heal what there was no wound to start with you know there was no wound like you leave and you go wake up fall down pick up yourself dust and run off like life is not waiting for anybody so if you are asking yourself how do i get out of of of, of is it recording yeah how do i get out of of depression after being dumped like dude it wasn't yours find yours immediately and get on with it like if it wasn't yours why are you even sitting there dusting you crying for what he's happy wherever he is so anyway guys, i know it's not easy i even knew when i broke up it took a lot of time for me to heal but i was sometimes you meet somebody who help you through the healing and it was not a rebound for me rebound is when you are looking for another partner to fill you and to have sex with you to to make you feel you know i don't know that is a rebound but when you're looking for a husband and sex you are putting a sex on hold as I've always, obviously for me, finding another person as soon as I broke up with one is not a rebound for me. You know, it's just the process of of dating and meeting, courting and, you know, going through courting and married and whatever. So anyway, when I met, when I went through that uh, separation like uh, thing, I was like, I was ready because I've always been ready. Like I've, I've been all along grooming myself to be a wonderful person inside inside you know you know based on my work with christ and based on, on on knowing who i am in god i've always been you know god has always been working on me and he's a working process is keep works on working on me every day so i was really open to meeting somebody and seeing how it goes but again when you are trying to date as a christian woman it is it is really not easy because of this pressure we try to give everything to god and we try to say i'm not gonna do this and i'm not never go but you end up doing it but again just finding somebody a man who is gonna be able to walk you down iron impurity my god it will take the hand of god i'm in that process at the moment because i met a guy online that i always did online i tell you guys that this is where i meet my guys so yeah so I always, and I met him online. He was a Christian man. He says he's a Christian man and everything. But then the minute we spoke like for, I think, two, one month and a half before we eventually meet, he lives in uh, in uh, Canada. I told you briefly about somebody in uh, the picture. 
And even him, I don't understand because I feel like men tend to view you sexually before seeing you as it is not a bad thing, but I, I don't find the hype about sex. You know, I just don't. Because you don't know me as a person. For him, in his culture, in where he's raised, it's okay to fondle me. It is okay to grope me. It is okay to to want to rub a, a, on me and to want to do all the sexual things. But he it says it's not okay for me to penetrate you, but it's okay for me to do this. But to me, it is not okay, you know, because I want to know you as a future professor. It's a future husband. Guys, English is not my first language. Don't judge me. So I, that's why I say to, I just I just don't get what is the hype about all this. So at first it put me off before because we met. This is a long story and I don't want this video to go so fast, far. It is a long, okay. We met, we speak a lot. And even the first spoke, speaking we did in, on Skype was very deep. But he mentioned to me that he is very into spiritual sex and i was like i don't associate praying and this say to me it entails when you you have when you're praying you draw the energy from god and that energy you turn it into sexual energy and you can masturbate as you do it as well and i was confused what is that i've never heard of that like really i've never and he was like like i'm i want to do it with my future wife and even he wanted me to do it with him through the phone and to me i was like what is I, i'm not i don't know what is going on i told him you know i'm open to all these things but i need to know what it is then he said to me do your research know about it but this is something that i would love for us to do with when we are married and all and when we finally met he was somebody who claimed obviously loved the Lord and everything, but different cultures, different beliefs, different ways of raising differ, you know. For me, I told you guys, fondling and groping is okay. So when we were together, I was prepared myself to go and meet him because I, it was all the way in Canada. And I had a flight. I was flying to Canada. So we met there. And how it happens is, he, he, I had seen it on him on Skype because we spoke on Skype a lot uh, most of the time, especially during the weekends. So I was in the bus and and uh, the crew bus arrived and when I got out, he was there waiting for me and he grabbed my bag, he hugged and grabbed my bag so quickly. Remember that is a, this is a, like first contact, you know, and every all of my colleagues are looking at me like, oh, that must be her boyfriend. But everything was just like so natural, you know. But when we went, because he had been, he had been driving eight hours to get to me, so he had to take time off work. So he drove one day earlier, so he could be in a hotel to wait for me, refresh, you know, and just be fresh before he met. He was very nervous before meeting me. So, it, because to him, we are gonna be husband and wife, you know. This is the talk that has been going on from the first time we spoke until, you know. So for me, I was like, you know, I just came out of a relationship and it was really intense. Things were getting into, we are getting married and all, and it just broke off. I don't want to put my, my hopes so high with this guy also. I just want to go with it one day at a time. So I just don't want to uh, take it too much at heart. I just want to give it a try, yes, but I'm just, don't, you know, see what happens again. So when he was in his hotel, but then we discussed, we say that, since we are comfortable with each other it was not okay at first i was not i was feeling a bit awkward about it because i was welcoming him to come and stay with me and obviously it's a bit daunting because you just met you don't know each other and everything but my intuition was clear with him so i say to myself nothing was warming warning me so let me just let him in so he came and he was really nice looking like like he's older i like older guys but he he looks good for his age so again as long as you are older but you are willing to compromise even if you had kids before you are willing that to have kids in the future i'm open with that and again he just like was very free with each other and everything he waited for me he grabbed my bags he was ready you know 
he was really enthusiastic he was really happy to meet me and everything so he was waiting for me to take my ho hotel key and he was all the way just glaring and you know like he was like oh my god so beautiful and all and, you know I, okay so i was like fine okay so we finally went he helped me with my bags upstairs in my room so we went to the room and he squeezed me like hugged me until i felt like my boobs were hurting and i was like oh like 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 just get back off a little bit you know and then he was like i know you're very daunting and you know usually after you've had a 14 hour splice you don't feel fresh you don't feel nice you don't feel any obviously you feel okay you are happy to meet him but again i was just like i was tired after 14 hours flight i just want to refresh so obviously he let me told told me go i am sure you want to refresh and you want to be comfortable you know i'll let you you know i'll go to the reception and i'll let you and he went to the reception and he let me prepare myself and everything and waited for me then when we got in the car guys this story is gonna be a little bit too long when he got in the car he first of all he got me a coffee and donuts and he put it in the car he had come with his own car he is an, and he has a nice car so uh, it's not that it matters but just to mention he's very proud of his cars this guy he has like four of them and car he's a very motor car kind of a person so not like it's, it's necessary i don't even own a driving license so i'm just letting you know guys so it's not that say oh wow so car is important no guys come on back off like back off back off wait for it and then we got in the car and um, i sat you know and and he he opened for me the car door he opened for me the doors and he told me that it's very offensive for him to open my own door when i'm with him and i'm like guys i'm a bit slow like things that people find offensive wouldn't be offensive to me you know i take people give people the benefit of doubts and i'm like just like don't taking people too much personal if i feel like they are too much obviously i will speak up but i don't really get so sensitive regarding things so he say oh back off don't open your door by yourself oh don't do this by yourself don't do don't do so even if you know someone like okay i'll let you open so anyway i was having fun with it because not every day people a man gets to open the door for me hey so he did that and we were in the car and before we even proceed he had me a coffee and a donut and then he said let's pray so i was like we were praying so and he was saying to god to like he was praying saying that uh, thank you for letting us meet thank you for your purpose in this thank you for giving us time together and i pray that uh, the time be enjoyable for us to get to know each other and blah 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 blah. and he prayed and then after he prayed i laughed and i looked at him and i like, he said why are you laughing i'm like because you prayed because guys it's never been i've never met any man who prays before you start things and he always prays even when we were in um, sometimes he calls me and says can we pray together and draw energy together like when we are praying he wants to also draw energy from god and this energy he wants to turn it into sexual energy so for me i'm really not not familiar with this because it's a practice that i've never really associated myself with so obviously it's a bit awkward but then uh to get the long story short we went to niagara falls we had a good time when we reached there in the car all along throughout the time he was holding my hands kissing my hand uh, praising me worshiping me blah blah everything you know and i was like okay yeah like it's getting a little bit too much and a little bit too touchy and i was like oh maybe that's just how he is and he said to me before that he likes being affectionate and he's a very touchy person um an african woman uh, i'm affectionate but i'm not very touchy you know and after being um you know like i never hugs and kisses and all this even i never got them from my family from my mom or my dad he was never somebody who hugged and kissed us so it, it is something that is is coming slowly but i'm i know that i'm a very affectionate person and i like cuddles i like hugs but i also like my space you know but he says he likes it all the time you know touchy touchy all the time so i was like hmm, let's see how this will go get out and then i was like we went to Niagara Falls, and then when we got outside the car, he grabbed me, and he wanted to kiss me. Remember, we kissed, but we kissed the lip one, like, like you know, the kiss, you know, the endearment kiss. But then, because for me, I don't kiss on the first date. I don't do this, you know, it's very awkward. But then when he grabbed me, when we got outside the car, and remember, I live in the Emirates, and in this place, 
we just don't do affectionate things in pub so i've been here 10 years so even when he was doing that i was looking around and i was like maybe somebody is seeing us what are you doing and then in the midst of him wanting to kiss me he was actually wanted to snog me i'm like wait a minute why is this happening like honey you don't do this on the first date like we are on our first date you don't snog on the first date so i put him off and he say, come on, why are you refusing to do this? I'm like, I don't do this on the first date. Just back off a little bit and let's just enjoy this moment without getting into each other's tongues, man. Like, excuse me, like I'm a Christian woman. I'm like one of those people who is very, very keen regarding this, these things. I don't do this kind of thing. So I told him and he understood. And he say, I'm a bit apologetic. So the thing goes, went, after we went to Niagara Falls, we had such a good time, you know, and it was a very nice experience, I remember. And when we got back to the hotel, he was very horny and very, wanted to be a bit too sexual. And he also told me that he's not into penetrating. But then again, I don't understand how you know that I'm nervous regarding us being together in a hotel room for the first time. And why would you even want to drop and fondle and it reached a point where he even because in the hotel room we have we had two beds in this hotel room so when we had two beds i was like wow well, they got us two beds so he was like oh well that must be god telling us we have to stay to get separate you know and all that but then at certain point because Sometimes I wanted to go for a cuddle and, you know, talk and we, I went for a cuddle. But I think that gave him an, uh, an, uh, like a signal that I wanted to do something. I think he didn't know, get to know me yet. So he was assuming things. And then he was like, he got so horny, he was doing all these things. And, you know, he was like thrusting behind me and saying this is when when we are married this is what i will do to you and he was uh, doing all these sexual moves and it was all over the place and i was very turned off with it you know i was very turned off i say it my husband doesn't do this like my husband respects me and my husband respects that i'm you know i don't like this i don't like all this you're a christian man you are a devoted christian man don't do this it's not something that we we are supposed to do so i told him this i told him like especially on the second date you know after i got to know you these things can happen but not second date so anyway to get the long story short it made me feel like most times the men that i've gone out with are very are sexualizing too much and most of these men who sexualize sexualize guys this story is gonna continue on the next episode so i'm not gonna go too much but the guys that i've gone out with they sexualize they are um, they they say that because you are sexy and you look good and all this the only thing that you would be wanting is getting fondled and getting touched and all these sexual actions it doesn't work for me you know there are women who are not like this it's a very for me a man who is like this is a total turn off for me extremely turn off this is what teenagers do in 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 you know this is what teenagers do for experimental purposes this is not what grown-ups do excuse me and then i was like very turned off then it continued it continued then i spoke with him i told him i had a very 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 serious putting boundary serious conversation with him and i told him if you want this thing to continue you have to respect my boundaries and one, two, three is my boundaries. I know that you have your needs and I know how our needs might differ. But at the same time, we have our own boundaries. And my boundaries, I don't like being fondled. I don't like da-da-da. I don't like da-da-da. I don't know. And then he said, oh, this was happening because you never communicated to me your boundaries. But then I thought, as a Christian man, you should know a boundary on how to treat a Christian woman. But anyway, guys, at the end of the day, I don't know where it is at the moment because I went on a crisp and on a holiday for, for almost two and a half weeks and I, my, my, my mobile phone was dead. He was looking for me all over the place. After that, we spoke and we clarified everything and things were fine. And we were fine because he said, now let's establish how this is going to get 
forward, then I was fine with it. But then obviously I was in the lookout for things that might happen that I might not like, that I might say, I don't like this. And he was like, okay. Then when I went on holiday, our conversation was a bit interrupted. And then he was looking for me everywhere because my phone was dead. And I was really worried. And I was thinking about him all the time and worried and blah, blah, you know, that he might be worried that I don't want anything to do with him because he was very sad what his actions were. And he thought that I, I was very put off with it and I don't want anything to do with him anymore. But I forgive and have benefits of a doubt when it comes to men, knowing that they are very, very different from us, from women. And I had to communicate my boundaries and I had to let him know what I like and what I don't like. And he respected that and apologized and felt really bad for how he behaved and everything was fine. But when I went on holiday, we were interrupted and he didn't hear from me for maybe one and a half, one week plus, And he was very worried. He know that. I, and then when I came back, I replied all his call. His, he's uncontactable. I can't find him anywhere because he, he said he communicated in one of the messages that he's going for vacation. He have holidays. So until now, his phone is on voicemail, his phone is off, he's not connected on, on, uh, on WhatsApp. Like his last scene was on the 21st of July until today, I haven't heard from him. So hopefully we speak again, but I'm not sure what is going on because he was worried that I'm disappearing. And now I'm worried that he's disappearing. So let's see what happens, guys. And guys, this video was a, a little too long and I apologize for it. And please, I hope you like this video. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and give me suggestions on other videos I'm going to make. And thank you so much for reaching 600 plus. Let's, let's reach 700 soon. And I hope to catch you guys time soon. And thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me. Have a lovely evening and see you soon. Tschüss. See you soon. Kisses.